President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad inaugurated first phase of the biggest and longest road tunnel in the northern province of Mazandaran. The 3,290-meter tunnel will decrease the traffic load on Haras Road and cuts the travel time from Tehran to the north by 45 minutes. Construction operation of the second phase of the tunnel started last Sunday morning by the President. The construction operation for the second and third parts of the Tehran North Freeway kicked off on Kalos Road with the chief executive in attendance. Ten popular kabuki actors have traveled down a river in Fukuoka, northwestern Japan, to promote their performance at a local theater. The traditional boat procession on the Hakata River marks the arrival of the kabuki stars from Tokyo. A crowd of 35,000 people gathered on the banks of the river recently. They cheered and tossed confetti as the boats approached. The performance at the Hakata Za Theatre this month will celebrate the assuming of stage names by members of the Ichikawa Enosuke family. Ichikawa Kamejiro became the fourth person to take the name Ichikawa Enosuke. TV and film actor Teruyuki Kagawa became the ninth Ichikawa Kusha. Thousands of people were in Fukushima City in northeastern Japan for a two-day event combining six local summer festivals. The event was first held two years ago to promote tourism in the areas hard hit by the March 2011 disaster. This year's event was hosted by Fukushima City. A group of men from the prefecture paraded through the streets carrying a huge straw sandal on their shoulders. The other groups included participants from the Nebuta Festival in Aomari Prefecture, known for its giant paper floats. Members of the Kanto Lantern Festival from Akita Prefecture carried tall bamboo poles and balanced lanterns on their hands and foreheads. One resident said she's happy that this is the first time so many people have gathered in Fukushima City since the disaster two years ago. She expressed hope that her hometown will quickly recover. Digital terrestrial broadcasting for the Tokyo region has been switched over from Tokyo Tower to Tokyo Sky Tree. At 634 meters, it's now the world's tallest broadcasting tower. The new service started at 9 a.m. local time last week. Tokyo Sky Tree is able to relay unobstructed television and radio broadcast signals. Transmission capability has now been doubled. It is built to replace Tokyo Tower, which is surrounded by many high-rise buildings. Broadcasting from Tokyo Tower continued for over half a century. A huge green sea turtle aged nearly 100 years old recently underwent an operation in Urumqi, capital of northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Workers at the aquarium where the turtle is kept sent it to a nearby hospital after noticing a recent drop in its appetite. The turtle has been housed in Urumqi for 13 years and this marked the first time it had been taken to hospital. After an operation lasting more than one hour, five fish bones-like species of foreign matter were removed from the reptile's throat. Hao Yan Jun, manager of Urumqi Aquarium, said they will give it some other medicine to help it recover and then will monitor its appetite to determine the next treatment schedule. Students from the Panda Road Primary School in Qingchu City, southwest China's Sichuan province, visited the Qingdu Research and Breeding Base of Giant Panda recently to celebrate the Children's Day. More than 100 giant pandas are bred in the research house, which is the largest artificially bred giant panda population in the world. The students stuck foods to pole to feed the pandas, who all stood up and scrambled for it. This is a method to make the gluttonous and lazy pandas to exercise. The students were also eager to ask the working staff questions about pandas' life, like the meaning of different sound made by pandas and why they eat so much. The staff explained to them with the help of a machine which recorded different types of panda sounds. Li Hongjing, teacher of the Panda Road Primary School, said that she was surprised to see the students' imagination and imitative ability during the visit. She also expressed her hope to give the children more chances to embrace nature. Currently, six giant panda breeding bases in China are offering public courses to give children more chances to get in touch with the national treasure.
Chinese President Xi Jinping joined more than 1,600 children from various ethnic groups and regions to celebrate the Children's Day that falls on June 1st, promising to provide better living and study conditions for children in the future. The children from 56 different ethnic groups, disaster areas, as well as representatives of congenital heart disease children, came to attend the third communication exchange activity, which will last for seven days in the newly constructed Children's Palace in Beijing. A young pioneer wore a red scarf for Ji after he arrived at the children's palace in the afternoon. Ji watched the children's playing with football and games along with the way and stopped in front of a vegetable garden to talk to two children who were working hard in the garden. Ji told the two children that they should set up a concept of labor being glorious by not only doing things by themselves but also helping others. He said children should strive for doing things for the public and chasten their volition. After the vegetable garden, Z went to an ecosystem observation station where many students are monitoring environmental data under the guide of teachers. Z told students that loving the nature is a good habit and protecting the environment is everyone's responsibility. Meanwhile, Z also went to visit some children with congenital heart disease who had received free treatment in Beijing. The children presented their handicrafts to Z and Z inquired about their medical treatment during the visit. In addition to the children with congenital heart disease, Z also visited those from quake-stricken areas, including Wenchuan, Yushu, Zuku, and Lushan. Z praised these children's idea of reconstructing their hometowns and told them to study hard and enlarge extracurricular knowledge to cultivate creativity. At last, Li went to watch children's performance and stressed the importance of providing better living and study conditions for children. Z added that the government should prevent and crack down any words and deeds that damage children's minds and do harm to the legal rights and interests of children. Information Minister Hassanul Han Ino said that the budgetary allocation will be enhanced in the next budget for the mentally disabled players to bring them back to the mainstream of society. He told this at an opening ceremony of the 6th Special Olympic Bangladesh recently. Among others present at the ceremony was Chairman of Event Dr. Shamima Martin Chowdhury. The opening ceremony was followed by a musical session performed by the disabled. The disabled players of Bangladesh received 78 medals including 35 gold in the last Special Olympic Games in Greece, held in 2011. They are preparing themselves from now to sustain their successes in the next competition to be held in 2015. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurated two salvage vessels of Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Authority, BIWTA, last Tuesday. Inaugurating the two salvage ships procured by Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Authority, BIWTA, from South Korea, the Prime Minister called upon all concerned, including owners and workers of the river transport, to be more active in checking accidents on the river routes. She expressed the hope that the rescue vessels, BIWTA, Nirvik and BIWTA Protya would play an important role in making the river routes safer. At the same occasion, the Prime Minister also opened two tugboats, Duronto and Durba. The Prime Minister said Bangladesh is a riverine country and to exploit the opportunity, her government has given a special importance to the development of river communication. Sheikh Hasina said the government has procured the two salvage ships, BIWTA Nirvik and BIWTA Pratya, having capacity of 250 metric tons from South Korea, as there were only two rescue vessels having capacity of 60 metric tons to face river accidents. The Prime Minister said, like other sectors, the river transport sector was plunged into corruption, irregularities and disorder during the rule of the BNP Jamaat Alliance government. The Prime Minister said the father of the nation, Banga Bandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, first added dredgers in the BIWTA fleet for maintaining navigability. She said after 36 years, the present government procured three more dredgers in 2012, which enhanced the capability of the BIWTA. 
IWTA in excavating the rivers and maintaining the navigability of the river routes. The Prime Minister said the government has undertaken programs to build trained and skilled river transport workers and to this end, regional training centres have been set up. The tension from last month is not so much felt in North Korea now. Recently, in Pyongyang, there was a large celebration on the streets. It turned out that the country's ping-pong world champions were to be celebrated in their home country. There were groups of people walking the streets with flowers in their hands. Ladies in the street interviewed said they are celebrating the table tennis heroes coming home. Some people were running and a lorry with speakers on the roof passed by announcing the champions were on their way. People lined and waited along the road. One of the spectators said their sportsmen have managed an achievement. It is a great step for sports in their country. People cheered as the champions passed by in a car. After many hours of waiting, everything was over in a short moment. This is how everyone who wins a world championship is celebrated in North Korea. One of the girls who were among the celebrating the return of the champions said North Korea beat the other countries and their sportsmen cooperated well as a team. It has brought honor and glory to their country. And that is why they are very happy. A royal band heralds the arrival of the Queen. This is a reenactment of the Joseon era silkworm farming ritual, which started in the year 1400, the second year of King Jeongjong's reign. During the Joseon dynasty, the ritual of praying for a good harvest was presided by the king while that for abundant silkworm farming was hosted by the Queen herself. The ceremony begins in earnest as the Queen is seated at the altar. A silkworm farming ritual was one of the most important royal ceremonies, second only to the Jongmyo tributes to the royal ancestors. The ceremony was suspended in 1908 during the second year of the King Soon John's reign, but was revived and has since been observed for 21 years at the Seoul City Wall's silkworm ceremonial altar. Meanwhile, children take part in a special festival at Hiewamun, one of the four smaller gates of the Seoul City Wall. The Seoul City Wall has been a part of the capital city's history for 617 years since Joseon's founding King Tajio first built it. Now, despite a few structural damages, it is poised to become a source of pride for Koreans and a cultural heritage for mankind.